Hello and welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Asobo, in conjunction with Microsoft, recently released a development update. This covered World Update 4 issues. I look forward at World Update 5. Sim updates planned, as well as feedback from the community. This is just a summary of some of the issues covered in the one and a half hour session. I'll leave links to the full update in the notes below. Under the SIM update, Sebastian from Asobo gave us an update on ongoing work to improve the turboprop modeling to more accurately represent the real world model. This included correcting the relationship between power and torque with varying RPM, the effect of feathering and drag on the prop. The good news here being that this is being built into the aircraft SDKs, so third parties will have access to these as well. To be featured in future sim updates, Asobo have been taking to the real skies again in order to fine-tune the aerodynamics. Work has started on the smaller aircraft such as the 172 and 152 as well as a few turboprops. This will be a long-term and ongoing project with the objective of trying to make sure these sim aircraft react as per real world. I'm encouraged to learn that they're still improving the flight dynamics of the default aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator. During the update, Marcel and Sebastian also touched on a number of optimizations we can expect in Sim Update 4, which include improved glass cockpits, memory usage, a better balance between CPU and GPU, as well as some traffic filtering. They've also reprioritized a weather radar and hope to have something ready by Sim Update 4. Jorg Newman from Microsoft also touched on a number of the partners that worked on World Update 4 and will be working on World Update 5, such as Gaia Simulations for points of interest, Blue Sky for the photogrammetry, Orbix for the airports and Black Shark for the AI. They also announced they're bringing out another aircraft. This time it's a Microlight, directly from a Sobo. It's going to be payware and when queried on this, well the response was, it needs to be payware due to licensing fees. Nonetheless I have to say it does look good and certainly fun, ideal for VFR. Due 27th of April. Closely modeled on its real world counterpart, it features a clutch that disengages the prop below a certain RPM. Hans Hartmann, working in conjunction with Aerosoft, the man that brought us this CRJ, is working on the ATR-42 and 72-600. Hans mentioned they're working on a high level of system fidelity, and more detail than's been seen in any other sim for an ATR so far. Non-committal on a due date, but 2022 was mentioned, although I suspect Christmas 2021 may be an attractive time to release this much anticipated aircraft. Now on to the subject of World Updates. Microsoft confirmed that World Update 5 work is now well underway and it's the Nordics covering Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland and Iceland. The release date is not confirmed yet but certainly before the end of June. They were not able to reveal which cities were going to get the photogrammetry treatment at this point. But they were able to let us know which airports were going to get the handcrafted treatment. But York from Microsoft revealed it was Echo Kilo Romeo November Bornhelm in Denmark. It was Bravo India India Sierra, I'm not even going to attempt that name in Iceland, Svalbard in Norway. An interesting one, Stockholm Orlando in Sweden, one of the larger airports, and lastly Vasa in Finland. I can't cover all the issues covered in the feedback session. They certainly covered a fair amount of ground, but the highlights were Working title, continue work on the Garmin G1000 and 3000. No time frame at this point, but work is progressing. They also went back to discuss further performance issues within the sim and confirmed that Asobo obviously are also working on the Xbox version of Microsoft Flight Simulator due for release this summer. Work on the Xbox version is not complete, it's ongoing, but development has been very good so far. And a number of performance enhancements are going to be ported across to the PC as well. They foresee improvements in the streaming of data and loading times, 
further optimization in terms of memory management and discussed some of the things that caused the performance hit in recent releases. They believe they have overcome some of the issues so far, some of them related to the trees and trees density related to height, and further work is ongoing. Interestingly, they're also planning to include a rendering slider that will allow graphics to go above Ultra, although admittedly this is some months away. The recent problem on logbooks where some people lost their flight logbooks has now been resolved, but they're not sure if they can restore the data for those individuals affected. They're still looking into that. Work on the replay feature continues, and from what they're saying, it looks like it's going to be a very versatile tool. Looking forward to this one. There was also some discussion on AI traffic and the ability to inject offline AI traffic into the sim. This is something that Microsoft are aware of, but it's not on their priority list at this time, it appears. They also mention it's a balance between performance and how much you can have in sim. There was also a query relating to a number of missing airports across the world. Microsoft confirmed that they're working on this and it related to the Bing data. They're confident they'll resolve it, but they need to get the correct data, some of the data for security purposes, i.e. a nuclear power station nearby, are not readily available. It was generally acknowledged that better beta testing was required for world updates prior to release, but not clear on how this is actually going to be managed. DX12 is certainly on the cards this year, but the incorporation of DLSS is not on the priority list and will only be reviewed post DX12 implementation and the Xbox release. The interaction between water and the aircraft and water landing aircraft was discussed and development work is ongoing to improve this. And they also mentioned that the 787 flight model is acknowledged that it needs work, but again, not in the short term. VR controllers are being worked on, but no date yet. Before signing off, there's just one thing I want to add following World Update 4. If you go to your aircraft selection menu, all the menus are the same except the bottom one used to be ATC options. It's now changed to customization. And below ATC, there's new entries. The first slide is something we haven't seen before where we can simulate the aircraft's performance degradation due to wear and tear by adding up to 10% drag. Interesting and a nice addition, but the next three sliders are a bit of a mystery, where it allows us to adjust the maximum deflection angle by up to two degrees, positive or negative, to refine the aileron, rudder, or elevator authority, something that can be achieved in the sensitivity settings for your controllers. This is here just to make it easier. If so, it's a strange place to find it, but perhaps it's for use with flying with the Xbox game controller. I'm really not sure. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this information useful and informative. Take care of yourselves and look after each other and I'll see you again soon and bye for now.